I would uh, like to give you uh, first a basic introduction to the unit writing template and the different sections of a TIP curriculum unit, followed by uh, some presentations by four experienced TIP fellows who will talk about their writing process and how they arrived at a finished product. Um, so while I'm doing this, I'm gonna recommend that what I do on my screen, you also try out on yours. Um, so if you want, you can sort of keep your Zoom screen off to one side and try opening the unit template, uh, which I am going to go to right now. So this is the document that I sent to you along with a copy of the TIP handbook uh, when I sent out the invitation to this event. Um, you should uh, make sure you have this unit writing template. Um, and uh, I'm asking you to open it right now. Uh, now this is a Word document template. And so that means when you open it, it creates a copy of itself and uh, you have to save that again, uh, uh, which I recommend doing right now. So I'm going to save this copy. And I'm just gonna put it in a place that's handy for me. And I always like to use a title that has my name in it. So if I'm sharing this with somebody else, uh, they can identify what it is. Okay. So when you get this template, now you may not know what your unit title is going to be yet, uh, but you can fill in your name and your school. And I recommend that you use the full name of your school because when we publish these online, people around the world, presumably, will be able to see them. And uh, so instead of an abbreviated name, give them something that's easily identifiable. Okay, so when you open this, you should see on the left-hand side, the navigation pane. If the navigation pane is not visible, uh, what you can do is go up to the view menu and choose navigation pane. Um, and this gives you a way of going around the document to different sections that have been assigned levels of heading and subheading. So for example, if I go down to classroom activities, it will jump down to that section of the document. And if you're dealing with a document that is 20 or 25 pages long, this is gonna be a big time save. Now, how do you get those links in the document? Well, we've provided the basic headings that you need to have in your unit, content objectives, teaching strategies, classroom activities, resources, and appendix. Your unit needs to have those things. Uh, in addition, you will create a, um, an, uh, sorry, an abstract, uh, which is a short paragraph describing your unit, uh, and that will go at the beginning. Uh, and the way we have created those sections is by assigning headings to heading levels. And if you go to the home menu in Microsoft Word, you'll see the styles. And I recommend that you pull out the styles pane by clicking the little icon in the right lower right hand corner. And that will dock your styles over here where it's handy. All right, so 
um, you can see that classroom activities has been assigned heading one, um, as have all the other major sections. You should reserve heading one for the major sections. And now I'm going to go through that. So the first section of your uh, unit should be content objectives. Um, a statement of what the subject matter is that you have learned in your seminar that you want to present to your students. Um, and uh, that may be subject matter that you have gotten from your uh, seminar leader and also from your own research, from your own reading. Uh, and generally the content objectives, that section is gonna have lots of background information uh, as well as some kind of rationale for presenting this material in your classroom. And the first uh, assignment that's gonna be due uh, will be your perspective, or sorry, prospectus rather. And the prospectus will contain an explanation of why your topic is important, why you want to present this material in your classroom. So that will be your rationale. Um, and many people put rationale as a subheading uh, under content objectives. Um, and so they might start with something like this and assign it heading two. Okay, and you can see anything you assign a heading level or a style sheet will, will show up, actually just the headings will show up here in the left of the navigation page. Um, so the next section is your teaching strategies. Um, and by the way, all of this is narrative. It should be um, written out in long hand or long form. Uh, the teaching strategies explain how you're going to uh, present that material, that new content to your students. Um, and uh, those teaching strategies should be adapted to the grade level um, and the particular students that you're dealing with. How do they learn best? Um, the third section, or the third major section is classroom activities. Uh, in that section, you should uh, detail one, two, or three lesson plans that you intend to use to deliver this material. You don't have to give every single lesson plan uh, but uh, give people enough that they can get a start uh, if they wanted to present this uh, unit in their own classroom. Uh, lesson plans should contain whatever material you would normally put in a lesson plan. Uh, goals and objectives, uh, evaluation tools that you might use, uh, materials that are needed, uh, uh, assignments that you're going to give the students, what they're going to do in class, what they're going to do by themselves, etc. Um, and then finally, you have your resources and your appendix. The resources should contain bibliography, all the sources that you cited in your content objectives at the beginning, uh, your background and rationale. Um, those uh, should be listed at the end. You should use the citation style of whatever discipline you're working in um, throughout this unit. So if you're working more in a humanities context, you might use Chicago style with footnotes uh, and bibliography at the end, or if you're uh, working more in a science mode, you might use the APA style with in-text references that have the author and the year that the book or article was written. Uh, and then again, a bibliography at the end. Again, the bibliography goes in the resources section, 
you can also include a separate, separate bibliography of materials that you recommend for use in the classroom. Um, and you might want to annotate that bibliography with explanations of how to use that material or why it's important. So bibliography for teachers and bibliography for students really uh, are, are what's in the resources. And then the appendix contains a list of the academic standards that your unit is covering. Uh, and they might be uh, state of Pennsylvania standards, they may be uh, common core standards, uh, federal standards, uh, they may be next generation science standards. Uh, people have used all of those in their units. Uh, so that explains the basic sections of the units. Now I just wanna go through some other uh, things about the template. You'll notice that there's a certain font and style for each section. So uh, your headings are bold. I, uh, some of them are italic, some of them are centered. Uh, your body paragraphs, and these are all in Times Roman 12 point. Um, they're uh, flush left and ragged right. Um, and you should keep these formats, if you use the normal style, that's the one for a body paragraph. Um, every body paragraph is, is uh, indented except the first one under a heading. The block quote style is used for extended quotations, more than say four lines of quotation. And you can make something into a block quote by using the quote style. Right, that automatically indents it on the left and on the right. Uh, there's a bibliographical entry style which uses a hanging indent, meaning that the first line is further out than the rest of the paragraph. Uh, bulleted and numbered lists should be used sparingly. Most of the material should be presented in narrative format. Uh, bulleted lists might be appropriate for say your uh, lesson plans where you have lists of materials or steps, uh, but for your explication in, in the content objectives, you should write everything out in paragraph form. Uh, that sort of explains how to use the unit template. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and maybe address some questions. And then we'll go on to the presentations by uh, fellows. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so does our research topic have to necessarily be about delivering content? Instead, could I take my research more in a direction of how do I grow a certain mindset in my students? Or how do I foster a certain kind of group work among students? Or how do I create a certain like inquiry-based spirit of learning? Or does it always have to be strictly about the content that I'm teaching? Or can I focus more on habits and mindsets and ways of learning? So that's a really important question. The Teachers Institute is a content based form of professional development, meaning we want you to explore a new uh, subject matter and deliver that subject matter to the students. So, um, and um, can you tell me which seminar you're in? Um, so I'm in the cancer biology seminar, but I'm not teaching biology next year. Um, so I was thinking about maybe going in a direction of like exploring the mindset of being a scientist rather than cancer. Um, okay. I don't know, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, um, this is a difficult uh, a question because normally we do recommend that people um, uh, join a seminar 
uh, that is teaching subject matter that they're going to be delivering. However, um, we realize that sometimes people are reassigned uh, to, to different uh, uh, teaching different subjects. So this is maybe something we would want to discuss with you separately and sort of figure out a solution. And in general, I will say that although we're focused on content, uh, we're also interested in how you deliver the content. That kind of thing should go in your teaching strategies and in the uh, content or in the uh, details of the lesson plan. Some people asked what to do if you don't have Word. Has somebody uh, figured out how to convert it to Google? Uh, yes, I have it converted into a Google Docs format. And it works as a template? Uh, I mean, I filled in my name in my school and I can still pull up the the headings and the menu navigation. Okay. And the headings? Yeah, it, it's historically worked for me um, as a template. The headings work fine. All the settings transfer over. Um, I, I had a little trouble at first, but it, it, it transferred over um, now. So yeah, and it, it works. It works. Um, everything had, lines up. I had the same problem. It took me a couple of tries to get it into a Google Doc, but mm -hmm. it, it does work. All right, all right, good. So it sounds like uh, people can make that transition. Okay, so uh, I think at, at this point, we're gonna move into the presentations by the individual teachers. And they are Vicki Baker from Girls High School who teaches Math grades nine through twelve. Emma Connolly from the D. Newland Fell School, uh, a special education teacher. Tia Larise from Penn Alexander School, uh, who teaches English to speakers of other languages in grades K through eight. And Sam Reed from the U School, who teaches English and social studies, uh, and again that's high school level. Um, so uh, we'll start with Vicky. And um, uh, Mary, can you spotlight Vicki so that she can begin her presentation? Thank you. Hi, everybody. So as I indicated, my name is Vicki Baker. I'm a math teacher at Girls High. And um, what I wanted to highlight is kind of the way I, I think about the, um, the TIP unit. And I, I've, I've set it up so that it's, it kind of runs like the, um, the, the unit you're going to write. So for me, when I get started, um, even though it doesn't ask you to, I really think about the kids and my teaching style and my school. Um, so that from the very beginning, I start thinking about just how the topic might actually work. Um, this is important for me because sometimes the seminar I'm taking is not a direct link to math. For instance, um, my first seminar I took in 2007 was American history. And it was great, it was really interesting. Um, and I needed to figure out, you know, how to use that information that we were learning for a math class. So these are just some of the seminar topics. Um, the first one, as I said, was American history in 2007. And so I wrote about the history of Philadelphia business and um, wrote units to help students um, figure out if they were gonna be an entrepreneur, um, what they might choose and what business trends were like in, in um, Philadelphia and what the history of um, black business in Philadelphia was. In astronomy, I did elliptical models and robotics. I called it gearing up for prosthetics. And uh, we talked about things that moved. We used math to describe movement. I took one that was, I took a seminar that was music and uh, we talked about music forms and um, sort of the, and, and, and how music can also be a form of protest. And so I talked about the forms, the different forms of math that we have like linear and quadratic and uh, all the, um, those types of, of, of mathematical modeling. I took a unit on uh, sustainability and there I looked at probability, was able to create a game where they could sample out of a bag and what they were sampling um, had to do with, um, had to do with carbon and um, you know, sort of good things and bad things in sustainability. 
And there was one I took in political science and I wrote on uh, race and politics and redistricting who will win. And so I looked at um, ways in which voting takes place since there are lots of different models, but we only use uh, just a few of them in our regular life. So I start with um, what might this look like because um, I'm not always in a class that's math. And then I also start with really pure backward design. I try to, I'm on, my brain works where I, I, I wanna figure out what do I think I'm gonna do? And then I fill in everything else. And I know most of us are familiar with um, just the whole backward design process. I found it to be very useful um, for the tip units. So then just running through some of the pieces. Um, by the time I get started writing, I have a sort of an idea of what I think I wanna do. And so I spend a lot of time sort of talking on the paper who my students are so that, um, you know, this is just, um, just a quote from one of the, the units where I talked about what they know and what they've done when they get to me and then what they need to know. The uh, format is gonna ask you for objectives. And um, there too, I try to say kind of top line in the beginning so that I make sure that it's, I'm keeping a, a, a good perspective on how to bring in all the, the unit information. So here, um, I started one unit talking about wanting to have an, an ultimate transfer um, to the students in certain ways. This was from um, the prosthetics uh, unit that I wrote. And then um, teaching strategies are really pretty, it can be pretty basic like what we do. You know, we, we write this, we use our standards and we talk about students will be able to in order to, um, and I pretty much stick to that, that format. The activities, um, for me, I really always, I want something that's hands-on because a lot of what I do is in a textbook. And so um, I start with the classroom activities in the beginning, working backwards to try to make sure that it stays um, interesting and fun. For um, one of the tips I like is visuals. So I've tried to, in the classroom activities in this case, um, this was making a, um, a prosthetic finger. And um, if you can find visuals, it helps you to give your instructions uh, in your appendix and um, in your classroom activities. I use a lot of the um, seminar resources initially as a jumping off point. Um, and then I go to educational resources to fill in. It sort of helps me to focus how the, whatever that content is, is gonna end up being a math lesson in the end. So it helps me to immerse a lot into what they give us. And in the appendix, I use a lot of sheets. So in my um, Who Will Win, I um, started them out with uh, an activity where they, they looked at um, their favorite water ice flavor. Um, and so in the appendix, I generally make sure I have worksheets and some other things that usually I'm building as I go along because you know, you're gathering so much information, you keep together some of the things that you find or some ideas you get about your own worksheets. Um, you're gonna put those in the appendix. Um, last year, I was in a seminar that instead of being just a topic like, um, like music or, or science, it was actually a way in which we could, um, we could animate our lessons. So I just wanted to share that with you. One, because it was so much fun last year and it's something that um, if you have the ability to, um, to build that in your lesson, since you're gonna do it next year, you might have a little fun doing it. So mine is on, um, I'm a math teacher. So this is about, this is for calculus students, but uh, what we did last year allowed us to use animation. And so um, you could have things falling out of the sky as we did there. So um, those are just some tips on what I do in writing the, the, uh, the, the unit and keep it interesting and exciting. For me, this is my contact information. So I indicate I'm a math teacher at the Philadelphia High School for Girls. And um, that's my personal email address. Well, Vicki, thank you so much. That was an excellent presentation. And I really love the way you're thinking in an interdisciplinary way and linking subjects as diverse as political science and uh, history and music to mathematics. Um, and that's uh, exactly the kind of thing that we're trying to encourage here at TIP. Next up, we'll hear from Emma Connolly. All right, hi everybody, I'm Emma. Um, 
I am going to share my screen. I have a little presentation. I made it for the end of our seminar last year. So if you were in my seminar last year, I'm sorry, this is gonna look familiar. Um, so hi everybody, I'm a learning support teacher at Fell Elementary School. And um, I'm just gonna talk about my process, how I wrote my unit from last year, which was from the seminar, The Dark Fantastic, uh, Reading Science Fiction, Fantasy and Comics to Change the World. So your content objectives, you start with your problem statement. And um, as Vicki said, this is really the good place to start. Like what's going on in my school with my students? So what am I gonna try to accomplish with the unit? What gaps do you see within your current curriculum or school or class? Um, what need is your unit going to address? So my tip units, uh, I did uh, the past two years, they always kind of address um, a similar issue, which is that Students with learning disabilities, you know, they do need to get research-based interventions and the, the district provides some, but if you've ever used a reading mastery or corrective reading program, you know that they're not very engaging for students. They're not very culturally relevant. They're seventh grade students reading about how Art was on a farm with his pig. And it, it's just, it's pretty painful to be honest. So um, what I try to do with my tip units and just my teaching in general is just try to marry um, research-based practices for kids with learning disabilities with um, engaging and culturally relevant content. So that's just kind of what I'm on the lookout for as we go through the tip seminar, no matter what the, what the content is. Um, so then in your content objectives, this is, I think the first year I did it, I didn't understand that this is really like a lot of your word count. Like this is, a, a pretty um, significant narrative about, you know, what did you experience in the class? And you, if you take notes, like I try to take notes after the sessions and um, just say, okay, in this class, we had this discussion and that got me thinking of something I wanted to do with my students. And then this reading also gave me another idea. So just like a narrative of what you experienced in the class and the research you did and um, what content from the seminar you wanna explore with your students. And then um, obviously my principal, you know, I want to explore science fiction identity development, but my principal also wants to see how I'm going to use that um, to address content related to my content area. So I would also do um, a narrative about how I'm going to translate that content from the tip seminar into skills and standards that I cover with my students, like reading fluency and reading comprehension. And I think this is often the hardest part because you might have you know, a few seminar sessions where you're like, that was really interesting, but I'm not really sure how I'm gonna make that relate to my students or my content area. So I think this is the bulk of the work here. Um, so for my unit um, related to our seminar, I decided I wanna use speculative fiction, specifically superhero comics um, to look into identity exploration because my students are always, you know, trying on different versions of themselves as middle school students do. Um, and then also talk about using superhero comics as a venue for imagining um, and speculating about better worlds and futures. So that was kind of what I got from the seminar. And then of course, you know, I was gonna relate it to my content that I always cover, which is reading comprehension, comprehension skills, vocabulary, and um, improving written expression, which are all related to students' IEP goals. So then you have your teaching strategies, which as Vicki said, this is like your pedagogy. So how are you gonna translate the tip seminar into lessons for your students? So for this unit, I decided we were gonna read a few things. So we're gonna read these two comics, Moon Girl and the Devil Dinosaur and um, Green Lantern Legacy. That was like our fiction text. And then also some nonfiction text and a documentary about real life superheroes. So I am Malala, um, just excerpts from that young readers edition and um, watch parts of Crip Camp, which is a documentary about uh, people in the disability rights movement. So that was kind of our text we were gonna engage with. And then um, using that to um, create a superhero narrative, one kind of model one as a group, and then the main culminating project uh, is that students create their own superhero narr narratives. So I've done this in like a limited way virtually, haven't done the full thing. I'm waiting until we can do it justice in person. I might, I will be waiting a long time, but that's a separate matter. Um, and then you end with your classroom activities. So this is more like 
your concrete lesson plans, you know, the things you would have in your lesson plan grid, like objectives, standard, et cetera. Um, so that's your classroom activities, like lesson plans that someone could follow. And then at the end, you just do your resources, which Edward covered, you know, the bibliography, the reading list, the materials. And then in the appendix, I just put um, the standard that my unit covers. So that was my unit. And I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Great. That was helpful indeed, Emma. Thank you very much. Uh, and I love the way you broke down uh, you know, how exactly you got from the content uh, uh, through the teaching strategies and the, and the lesson plans. Um, and please note that uh, not all of the content that your seminar leader presents is going to be relevant to you. You have to distill from what they present the things that are most useful to you. And sometimes uh, you might go outside of what they present and do a little bit of reading on your own uh, to uh, really find the material uh, that works for you. Uh, so uh, thank you again, Emma, for, for that excellent presentation. Uh, the next person up is Tia Larice. Hi, Tia. Hi, how are you? So thank you so much, everyone. I know it's been a long day. <laughs> so for those of you who are new, I hope you can get a little bit of insight into how I plan uh, my curriculum. This is my sixth or seventh year taking a uh, TIP class. And then um, for those of you who are returning or you saw me present this at the celebration of writing and learning, um, I, I hope that you can take away maybe a resource or a book that would benefit you from your, um, in your classrooms. So my name is Tia Larisse and I teach um, K-8 ESOL students at Penn Alexander School. And I am a first generation American. So when I was taking The Dark Fantastic with Dr. Ebony Thomas in the spring, it um, really inspired me to consider the intersectionality as it applies to immigrant families and the, the students that I serve in my, in my community. In, at Penn Alexander, I have about 65 ESOL students who speak 15 different languages, uh, most of which are Bengali, Arabic, Chinese, Spanish, and Kazakh. And so I ended up developing a unit. Um, here I am, graphic novels as social equalizers for English language learners. And so every year I find that my curricula really draws from the students that I'm teaching that year. What are their interests? What are, they, um, what are their needs? And from that, coupled with what I'm learning in the class is how I develop um, my unit. And so this was really, um, the one thing that really resonated with me in Dr. Thomas's class that is that she explained that representation in literature and in particular speculative fiction could be considered a form of social justice or agency, whereby young people can read and write themselves into existence. And I feel like in a world of voicelessness, um, for my students, especially when they're in classrooms and they don't speak, um, or they're, they're not able to speak the language, I think it's so crucial to find ways and um, that they can express themselves. And so I, I kind of took up on this journey to develop um, a graphic novel unit of study. So as I began to develop my unit, um, I was considering the content objectives, not only the things that I was learning in Dr. Ebony's um, Thomas's class, but also learning more about graphic novels. And so I did a lot of research on the Penn Online Library actually to find research journals and popular press articles to kind of give my curriculum a little bit more depth to build out that content objective section. And so I, I really discovered that graphic novels can be very powerful when used for English language learners, especially for providing comprehension comprehensible input, lowering the effective filter, creating spaces for translanguaging, focusing on language and content, and really illustrating very human issues. It was the core of what I wrote in, in that section. So through this process, I also began to dig a little further to find graphic novels in particular that were reflective of immigrant experiences. And so the images you see in this slide are actually from a picture book 
a wordless picture book called Here I Am, which is the, where I got the name for my unit. Um, and it definitely lends itself to discussions faced by immigrants, really the pressures to assimilate into a larger American culture and the desire also to maintain a unique cultural and linguistic heritage. And so it, it follows the journey of a little boy and his, his move into America. And so, as I've done all of this research, I began to formulate how I would teach this. And so for me, I, I developed three bends or units of study that I could teach throughout the year or um, simultaneously. And there, all of the units align with the WIDA can-do descriptors, which outline language development standards for listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And um, so the first unit is a deep dive where we would just read and study graphic novel mentor texts. Um, then we would go into kind of st studying the book, Here I Am, and looking into identity and um, immigration and language. And then lastly, we would craft our own graphic novels. And so um, the next big component of our curricular unit is actually the resources section and libraries. So I created a Padlet um, and if you want the link, you can, it's just Padlet graphic. Um, so I actually created a, an online resource for myself and for other teachers to be able to access mentor texts or suggestions for mentor texts of graphic novels they can use in their classroom. Because I'm a K-8 to teacher, I have picture books in the lower grades, um, some chapter books in, for third through fifth, and then a lot of um, variety of texts for middle school as well. And here are some of my favorite educator padlets. Um, written by hand is Eric Han out of Columbia. And so I, I've just found a lot of resources. There's also two sites, um, Comixology and Comics Plus, that allow you to view and show your students and share your screen to be able to study those comics in class to sort of um, understand those subtleties. And then lastly, um, which I think is also one of the most important parts, is going into the actual classroom activities and what you're going to do with your students. So um, the bottom two here are from last year, my students, they love graphic novels. And so um, I did a unit with them kind of testing out this with my, my current students where I had them um, think about if they lived in an alternate reality or were thrown into the past, kind of what types of things would they encounter? And then actually today, I just signed up a lot of my students. I'm starting this unit of study. Um, so you can see all of my kids registered very quickly. And um, some of my students are already working on comics um, as we speak. Um, I've been watching every 10 minutes, he updates a new slide. So um, you can see, this is one of my fifth graders and he's already trying to generate some sort of story. What I love about Pixton is that, which is the platform that I use, you can leave comments for the students and then also they have an opportunity to download and share it um, and upload it in any other capacity with their, their classmates. So, all right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Tia. Uh, that was really inspiring and I especially, uh, uh, enjoyed all of those different online resources that you found. Um, some people might want to uh, uh, get the links to those because I'm sure they'll uh, be very useful. Um, and I also uh, uh, liked the way you foregrounded your students' experience in developing the unit. Uh, I think that's uh, something that's important for everybody. Um, so I realized that we uh, just had uh, two presenters who are in the uh, dark fantastic. I assure you that the next presenter was not in that seminar. He is Sam Reed uh, from the U School. Sam? Hey, hey. First of all, I want to give, I want to give a shout out to all the uh, previous uh, presenters who went ahead of me. Like you gave me a super tough act to follow, but we're all colleagues and so we're just sharing information. Um, and I'm happy to share and basically, I'm going to be doing more like a, um, 
a high level view of curriculum design and the research along with I'm um, talking about the unit goals and I'll pull the hood up a little bit on one of my uh, units and I'll talk about the after afterlife of a unit as well. <laughs> so uh, just for your information, my name is Reed, AKA Samuel Reed III. Um, I'm, a, I'm a professed teacherpreneur. Um, I'm a tip long-term tip fellow I've been blessed. I've been uh, participating in Penn's uh, project-based learning program. I'm a Phil Whip teacher consultant, and I'm I'm super blessed to be one of the founding uh, educators at the U School. And the tip seminars in general have like allowed me the opportunity to reflect and share on the intersection of my teaching practice, my personal uh, passions, and my everyday living. Uh, so my design approach. Again, I'm going kind of high level, and some of these points have already been. Uh, spoken of uh, when Vicky talked about bringing uh, that backward design approach or bringing that empathetic approach like we we engage in this at the U school on a consistent basis where we use this design process and well as I'm developing my units I'm following these processes of, of again empath empathizing with with my students defining what it is that they need to learn coming up with some design approaches, developing, and then prep, uh, prototyping, practicing, and then developing, deliver the final product, right? And so that's how uh, we design our units in, at the U School, but also that's how I kind of uh, put together my units, uh, my teaching, cur teaching curriculum uh, in TIP. Um, and just to give a little teaser of, or a high level view of the project-based learning approach, where we're looking at like ways to use authentic learning, using the iterative process, incorporating collaboration, and then focusing on the disciplinary approach where we get the discipline, the disciplinary learning through the content of the seminars that we're participating in. And so here's one of one of my units uh, that again it kind of shows the flow of the design process. And I developed this unit while participating in the uh, data visualization course that was he held at Temple. And I called the unit one people, I mean, one island, two people. And so uh, we, I came up with approaches for launching the unit. Uh, the research was the, the research around the content uh, where I had to find additional information or specific information around Haiti and the Dominican Republic. We explored, I explored dance traditions. I had to do research around dance traditions because I wanted to bring that element into the unit. And then I brought in the skills of data visualization. I, we worked on prototypes of coming up with infographics. We had feedback and then we did a final delivery of, of the unit, right? And so the tip design process of de developing a unit supported this this unit as well and it went really successful what what I one other thing I like to say in terms of like high level high level thinking of uh, unit design I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with um, the old MTV MTV show pimp my rod but basically you can pimp your curriculum and I, I, st I stole this from Kelly Gallagher I don't know if you guys follow him he's a big uh, national writing project uh, presenter and speaker. But basically what he has the students go through is in the writing process, you're going to substitute, you're going to take stuff out, you're going to add stuff, you're going to rearrange stuff, right? And that's basically what you're doing the whole time when you're designing your unit. You're substituting stuff, you're finding stuff, you're taking stuff out, you're adding stuff and you're rearranging stuff. Now on the research process, uh, again, your professor is going to have a reading less, but again, you, have, you should also, uh, pay attention to what your colleagues are reading because they often, as Edward said, sometimes the professor's list is limited and your colleagues might be focusing on some things that you're interested in. Also, there are local organizations. You don't wanna look, uh, you don't wanna, re you don't wanna not use uh, some of the local resources, uh, the libraries. And I use the university libraries, but again, non cope during, when we weren't in COVID, I used my local library as well, particularly around resources for children because like they have the best children's librarians, like no, no disrespect to Temple or Penn's librarians, but the Philly children's librarians are, are like the best in the world, right? Um, also, 
if you if you belong to national networks or you belong to any networks, those are also excellent resources for uh, curriculum writing and design. So I, I rely on colleagues in the National Writing Project as well as resources, the National uh, Council of Teachers of English. And then I'll, I'll just wanna share with you guys a tip around when you're researching, you need to come up with a system for curating and bookmarking your material because otherwise, if you don't, you'll lose valuable information. And I wanna share with you uh, one source that I use to curate um, my materials was this site called Curio Learning. And I'll, I'll put the, the link, and I, again, I'm not, endorsing, I'm not endorsing the site at all, but I just used it to like curate my resources and I'm going to um, share, I'll share that uh, in, a, in, a, in a minute. But in, in the Curio Learning, the, there's, I, I posted uh, the unit that I wanna talk a little, pull, a, put the, pull the hood up a little bit on, on is the, my mindfulness unit. And this, this kind of speaks to the question that um, I believe um, it was Catherine or was it Catherine who asked the question around like, how do you design units around uh, ha habits of success or mindful habits or dispositions? And so I actually designed a unit that I was going to use primarily to teach during um, advisory that uh, in the seminar where we were learning about mindfulness, I designed a unit where I was able to put that into practice. And I'm really proud of that unit um, that I even like, when I talk about the afterlife of the unit, I was able to take those tips that I developed in the, in the lesson plan, which I had on the other computer. I'm, I'm, I'm on this other computer. I don't wanna go into the tab, but in the lesson plan, there are like tips on how to do these mindful practices that, that I learned both in the seminar that I participated in, as well as the resources. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I love the way you brought all those different resources together. And uh, in your explanation of how you arrived at your unit, um, one island, two people, um, uh, I thought it was really good how you went out and, and researched and brought in your own subject matter <laughs> the uh, professor who taught that or who led that seminar, David Nickerson, is a political scientist and a mathematician. Um, he didn't really know anything about uh, uh, the Dominican Republic. So you really brought that information in on your own. And uh, that's something that everybody can do. Uh, so uh, Sam, thanks, thanks for, uh, for that presentation. Thank you. Uh, Okay, so I realize uh, we're a little over the time that we expected to take. Uh, and I know you all have uh, things to do and places to be uh, like home, because <laughs> we're all at home. Um, so um, uh, we'll uh, wrap up there. Um, again, uh, we will be making uh, this the recordings available uh, for you to review. We'll send out email about how to get them 